Hi, I'm Sam, your resident fantasy reader. And I'm Morgan, your romance reader. And we welcome you to Just One More Page. Where it's never just one more page. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because you, you're so short. I'm not sure. You're shorter than me. I am five one and three quarters, Miss 411. Don't even I know. like being 411. You're not for you're like shrunk because you're old. <laughs> I have not shrunk yet. I will shrink and I will probably end up being five feet. But give me my five one and three quarters for now, please. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay you'll never get over that okay. one picture that you were standing i was standing in a hole that's the only reason you were taller no i don't think so mm-hmm. hi guys uh welcome back to another episode things may obviously sound differently because that's not sam who are you you stranger <laughs> i am rosie your other bestie <laughs> <laughs> so sam decided to take off a couple of weeks because she needs to focus on schoolwork. And so I decided to have back on Rosie, who came on during Sam, while Sam was on maternity leave. We read, what do you like to call those books? Blue Dick Alien books? Yes. Ice Barbarian (laughs) books. She made me read two of those books. So I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I should have Rosie back on again. You know, why not? Why not just traumatize myself again <laughs> so you're back on i am and the books are not spicy this time oh no <laughs> right <laughs> like um excuse me i feel like what <laughs> sam is fantasy your romance i'm and spicy you're just spice <laughs> It's just a little, I'm a little spicy. A little spicy. Oh my goodness. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my newest favorite book series, a book series I actually got you to read, which is a part of the Knock 'em Out series by Lucy Score. And the first book we're going to be talking about is called Things We Never Got Over. And this is a book that is extremely popular on TikTok, is everywhere. And I feel like everyone knows about it. But if you don't, let me quickly explain what the book's about. So this book follows Naomi, who isn't just running away from her wedding, but towards the rescue of her twin sister, who calls her needing help. Arriving in the small town of Knockamout, Virginia, she soon finds out that her twin sister hasn't changed at all, stealing her car and her money, on top of that leaving behind a daughter that Naomi never knew existed. Knox Morgan doesn't do complications, but that all changes when he sees Naomi's life implode right in front of him. The least he can do is offer her some help, but that is what the plan is until the trouble turns into real danger. So first off, how did you get me to read this? What what was it that you said? You're like, you'll love it. Okay, let's first off, let me just say right now, for some reason or other, Rosie has a thing about Vikings. (laughs) All I have to say is, um, so there's a Viking. You're like, okay, what book is this? What book is this? There's a hot Viking? (laughs) What? Okay, I'm going to read it. So this book is really long. It's like 500 pages. And I'll fully admit, I read this book in two days. I think it took me about four days. Yeah. But I don't read it as fast as speed. <laughs> no, well, it. I read it. I read this book and then I loved it so much that I bought the audio book so I could listen to it at work because I was like, I like, I oh, was, so you wanted to, yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. one of those books that like I just kept thinking about and I kept on being like, I just want to know what's going to happen next. Yeah. And of course, we know, all know I listen to my audiobooks at like 2.5 speed. So, like, I got through it real fast because <laughs> I was upset. First off, non spoiler review of the book. Did you like it? Did you not like it? I Your loved rating? it. Okay, you yeah, loved yeah. it? I loved it. You want to know my rating already? Yeah, okay. tell me your rating. I would say four and a half, five. I really, really liked it. You book. really, really yeah, liked it? I really liked it. So, like, what did you think the book was going to be about? Like, did you read the description of it? Do you I, just didn't. Know? I, di- I didn't. I didn't. I just knew that there was going to be a Viking. A hot Viking. <laughs> And I knew there were spicy moments because your face would get really red at work. (laughs) (laughs) So So many times I'd be like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. You don't know me. Or you would just randomly giggle. And I'm like, what are you doing? (laughs) You're like, I don't know what is happening. I actually really love this book. I can understand why so many people talk so highly about this book and you know i'm not normally like a spicy type of person although i say this as someone who's read icebreaker as someone who's read other spicy novels but like (laughs) 
I I really am not like a smutty person. That's just not me. Personally. You're not, but you are really good at acts. I know you don't do it on I purpose. I don't mean to. You really just accidentally find them. But yeah. And then they just they just show up. Listen, yeah. it's not my fault. But the ones that you do like, they're not just spot like they actually have a really good story line. yeah I personally really love the book because like I feel like this is a type of book that both you and I both need to hear because sometimes like the main character of this book she's very much about forgiving people giving people too many, too many chances. chances yeah and I know for me I'm somewhat like that but for you I'm definitely you're like definitely some... like you're definitely like that and yeah. I think this is the type of book that you needed to read and it's hear here. yeah because definitely. yeah I love the book for that aspect and for like talking about sometimes you can't really help the people that don't want your help and so I appreciate that. I also wasn't really quite sure how I would feel about like having her take care of her niece. But I honestly felt like she was like the perfect mom. She was. And like, I think she honestly wanted to be a mom for such a long time that yeah. this falling in her lap, she's like, okay, let's she go. Yeah. She just immediately filled that role. And I don't know about you, but I was constantly laughing through this book. I thought this book was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it really was. And I laughed out loud. I thought the characters were well developed. You know, there's not like a lot of characters, but the, I don't know about you, but did the town, because it is small town yeah. romance the town felt like it had a ton of characters in it yeah right? definitely yeah like it wasn't flat like it, it seemed like such a nice town too like i'd like to live there i love how i don't know do you know like well, I, it's very gossipy it's very <laughs> gossipy i don't really mind i don't know i guess i i would mind some of my business being put out there but it looks like everybody pretty much for the most part in the town like had everybody's back yeah like you know what i mean like there yeah. weren't any Bad, yeah. yeah, bad characters or yeah. I know. mean, well, I mean, I mean, yeah. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about spoilers, I guess if there's anything else you'd like to talk about, I wanted to ask you who your favorite characters. Were. Oh, do my you favorite characters. Spoilers or now? We can do that now. Okay. So my favorite characters were definitely. Who? Wait, who do you think my favorite character was? Oh, I know who. <laughs> who? Lucian. Shut up. <laughs> Hey, Lucifer. <laughs> Why? Yeah. I know Listen, you. it's not my fault. I have attachment to rich sugar daddies <laughs> who are handsome and tall and, and have muscles. And possibly evil. And evil <laughs> and have like, you know, daddy issues. It's not my <laughs> fault. Those are the type of characters that just get attached to me. So I, I obviously love Lucian, but I also really, really loved Steph. Yes. Steph and Jeremiah. Too. And even Sloan from the first book I really yeah. liked. I will fully admit, I wasn't the hugest fan of Lena yeah, me in the neither. first book. Second yeah. book changed my mind, obviously. In the first book, I wasn't a huge fan of Lena. Lucian wasn't uh, one of my favorite characters like he was for you. Yeah. But I, did, I didn't dislike him. But my favorite, other than obviously Knox and Naomi, was definitely Steph. And then, like you said, Sloane. Yeah, yeah, Sloan. Sloan was definitely one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Did you ever have a, did you have a character that you really didn't like? That I really didn't like? Yeah. Yeah. Who was that? Tina. 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 And then, like, I listened to the audiobook in the beginning, and there's a part in the audiobook that the narr narrator does so well where she calls Tina, and she's like, where are you? And Tina's like, where are you? Like, I would have smacked my yes. sister. I would have been like, let me reach through this phone and just push you off the road. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. She was terrible she's horrible so i guess let's go into our spoiler yep, spoilers. section if you guys have not read the book please go do so it's such a great book and then come back and listen to us discuss this book if you guys would like to go check out our other episodes last week me sam and i did release an episode talking about our hot takes in the book community we also released an episode prior to that in which we were talking about ruby red which was a really great fantasy novel that sam read when she was in high school and we decided to like reread it for her birthday but we're going to be talking about this book and spoiling away so let's go so firstly i want to ask you yeah did you have any favorite favorite scenes in this book because i had so many favorite scenes in this book at least oh like top goodness. two top two favorite scenes top two favorite scenes do you want me to know mine? Yes. Okay. Well, I have so many. So I love, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I can't. It's hard. Okay. So I actually loved it when he went shopping with them. Oh, I love and that. And he like bought Waylon. Yes. Like all, wait, Waylon? Waylee. 
No. Wait, I, I wrote this down. It's Wei Lei. Wei Lei. Yeah, because the dog is Wei Lin, which is so confusing. Wei Lei. Wei Lei. So he bought Wei Lei like, clothes, and then the whole thing of buying her underwear. Underwear. I went, ah! And like, her phone, no, the daisies. Yeah. The phone case. Yeah. That I loved. Like, the fact that he was like, can I take you, like, shopping? And she's like, why are you even taking me shopping? He's like, let me just spoil you. So I love that scene. I also really love the scenes in which he's being protective of her, like, or even Wei Li. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Wei Wait, Wei Lee. Wei Lei. Because like that scene where she's getting her hair cut and they're getting their hair cut and, and then Wei Lee says something about how Tina cut her hair. Cut her hair as punishment for something. Yeah. yeah. And Knox was like, that's never gonna happen again. Yeah. Like that and, and like he's like, you know that wasn't a that wasn't, wasn't right. Good. A sane person would not, not do, that. do that. Yeah. And like so that I love those scenes. And then the other scene I really liked too was when they go to the bar together, mm-hmm. Lena, Sloan, and she gets drunk. That's my other favorite scene I had too. Oh, there's so many. One scene that pops up that I just thought of because we were talking about it earlier, actually. I love when, so it's, what is it, Shark Week at work? Yeah, Shark Week. <laughs> it's Shark Week at work, which is a week out of a month. It's when all the women that work at Honky Tonk, yeah. right, they all are in sync because they work together and they all get their menstrual cycle around the same time. So they call it Shark Week and Knox actually is an awesome boss. I would be a boss like that. He stays away from them because they don't want to be around his grumpy ass. Yeah. And he buys them brownies and snacks. Yeah. Gets some heating pads. Like everything a woman would want if it's that time of the month yeah and he like like i said stays away and and it's just like this thing but because i think it was probably right after they had hooked up for the first time Mm -hmm. he uh came into work looking (laughs) looking for her yeah and when he found out that the reason she wasn't there was because she went to meet with the teacher that was giving way a hard time and he found out who the teacher was and that Tina had slept with the teacher's husband. He immediately, he's hauling butt over there mm. to protect her. So that that whole scene at the school and everything and prior at the bar, like I just, I love all that, how protective he is. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I also really like the scene in which they had the barbecue mm-hmm. and they invite everyone except That's Knox. Him. And Knox, like, and even his dog left him to go to the barbecue. <laughs> and he's like, Really? you were gonna ditch me yeah. so i thought that was really cute and how he saw that she didn't want to invite him which yeah. made him want to stay like, more like, no, like oh she like, doesn't want me yeah here. and then of course the cp or cps yeah. person comes at the wrong time which talking about cps do you think that tina because the whole thing is tina basically abused Whaley. yeah like like she was not a good mom it seems like to me that terrible she would leave her by herself when she was too young to be left by herself yeah. didn't give her like good food to eat and by good food yeah. i mean like food with nutrients like she would just give her junk food just horrible do you think that tina was a good mom to her because towards the end it seems like she was a little protective over her no i don't think she was a good mom at all but do i think that she does love her daughter in her own way yes yeah and i think the only thing that made her not really a good mom but at least a little bit just a tiny little bit s- smart or she smartened up yeah. was the fact that she left her with the sister and she i don't know if we were talking about that already where she signed over yeah her sign yeah. over her right her rights yeah so there's a difference between tina and iomi where tina is portrayed as the bad twin do you think there's a way for tina to redeem herself because like throughout the story tina is like like naomi says like oh like when we went to prom tina like gave my date a blowjob tina like went to school when I was sick and told this teacher I had a crush on that I had a crush on him. Told the friends not to play with her. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. like has always been kind of mean. Do you think that there's a way for Tina to redeem herself, Tayobi? Or is it just like you think that is in too deep? Honestly, I think it's in too deep. I think I think the best way for her to make it up to her family, it never specifies how long she's gonna be in prison. Mm -hmm. But I, I would think because she didn't actually commit murder or anything like that, it shouldn't be too long. Yeah. If she gets out and if she wants to like actually do right, the best thing for her to do is just to slowly just try to get back with the family and just, you know, but not trying to get her daughter back that her daughter. No, that's, that's Naomi's daughter now. Yeah, like, no, I completely agree. Yeah. Naomi does struggle with her relationship with Tina mm-hmm. because she constantly says yes to Tina, like, I'll come save you, I'll yeah. come bring you She's money, I'll go do pleaser. that. 
do you think that she was being foolish to trust Tina? Yeah, all those moments in the book where she didn't tell anyone and she like would meet up with her knowing that she's done already so much harm and like she's been stealing her clothes and all this. The fact that she keeps on meeting up with her or well, she only met up with her once. Yeah. She's believing and trusting her. Yeah, she's a little naive to that. Naomi and Knox has a very kind of interesting relationship because it is grumpy versus like grumpy sunshine. Yeah, because she's so such sunshine. Yeah. yeah, and he's grumpy. Do you think that they mesh together really well? Like, did you like the romance, like their romantic story? I do. They mesh well. Like, they just bring out, like, good things in each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, he's tough and a badass. And I think he makes her a little strong, stronger and braver than she normally is. Mm-hmm. She's such a people pleaser and always taking care of people. But I love how with her, it's, like, the opposite. He's the one that takes care of her. Yeah. And takes care of Wele. And, like, I yeah, I just love their whole... I just love how protective he is of them. Yeah. Like, I don't know why. I, I think I was telling you this, that like real life Morgan, if a guy came to me and was being super protective, like how he is of her, I would have been like, no. I think there's a part in the book where he throws her over his shoulders. Oh, yeah, I love and, that. And I was like, <laughs> he smacks oh. her butt. I was like, oh my goodness. But then real life Morgan would be like, sir, I'm going to call, down. I'm going to call the police on you. I'm going to like, kick you where the sun doesn't shine but book morgan was like oh my god carry me away sir (laughs) like i was giggling when i got to that part i was screaming so i do want to ask you there is a part where Knox separates himself from Mm. them yeah does it make sense why it happened or do you think that it was just foolishness and it didn't make any sense i understand that he was like scared i was i was upset when I saw it, I was like, what is he doing? Yeah, yeah. It, it got a little frustrating. And I understand, like, because his father is a drug addict. Yeah. Which, by the way, did you realize that when they went to the shelter and they were giving out, like, I didn't. St- haircuts, but then, yeah, till later, I didn't realize. You that. didn't realize yeah. it was mm-hmm. him? No. So I, I didn't either. I was like, I wasn't really quite sure where the book was going with yeah. it. Yeah. Because like, this is character. Yeah. Yeah. And then it made sense to why he is so. Well, actually. If you think that he wouldn't own a bar <laughs> because like his dad struggles with substance. Yeah. So that was interesting. Maybe he needed that to prove to himself that he did not struggle with substance. So another thing that I didn't realize was going to happen in the book is domestic abuse. Yeah. Because her fiance, Warner and her were a couple and yeah. she just like felt like this is something that she had to do. It was like checking off all the boxes kind yeah. of thing. And then Warner started getting abusive to her and started hitting yeah, her. Yeah, that took a turn. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. And honestly, when he came to the bar and Lucian <laughs> grabbed him, it was like, the door hit his face. What am I supposed to do? And I was like, <laughs> I was screaming yeah. laughing. That is another part of the story that I didn't expect to happen. Yeah. Was them, there was some sort of domestic abuse that led to yeah. her leaving her fiance on like at the wedding. That, that's what I like about this book. And like we said, we've read all three of yes. the books. This one, I can re- I can relate more to yeah. this one because of her background yeah. with her, yeah, you know, her ex, and just the way she is, people pleasing, and, yeah. And it, it kind of helped me too. You know what I mean? Like I've already yeah. gotten better with yeah. all that, but it, it it helps to like listen to. listen to someone else's storyline yeah. that's kind of like your own, something you can relate to. relate to, and just kind of see how they got through it. Yeah. So the book is called like Things We Never Got Over. Yeah. Why do you think it's called that? This is just my opinion. I could be completely wrong, but I think she just never, it's two things. It's her and what he didn't get over. I don't think she ever got over all the stuff that Tina put her through her whole life, childhood and everything. And I feel like he never got over everything he went through with his father. So I I think it's kind of like, it means like both of them. Yeah. Did you think that the reasons why Nash and Knox were fighting was because of the lottery or was it, did you think it was something else? I thought it was because of a woman. Did you? Okay. I did. I 100% thought I, it was for a woman. I thought so too. Yeah. So I was like, why are they so And I thought, it was, I thought, oh shit, it's happened all over again. Yeah. But even though I really never thought that Nash had a chance with her. Yeah. I no. think that Nash was just like, ooh, a new pretty thing in town. Yeah. Let me go after her kind of thing. Yeah, because you could tell like the connection that they had from like the beginning in the book. Nash and uh, Lucian yeah. are described as really handsome mm-hmm. beautiful men yeah like all three of them and not yeah. so she definitely had her her pick of the litter her pick of the litter 
that she definitely chose right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I really love the fact that in this book, there is found family, which is yeah. one of my favorite tropes because she gets along with Sloane so well. Mm-hmm. And she also has like even Liza J. Yeah. Which Liza's J storyline was really like, if you really think about it, it's really sad. The fact yes. that she lost her husband and she used to win. And like, her daughter. And her daughter. Yeah. Which she, is their, their mom. Yeah. And they she used to run a beautiful lodge and it just kind of closed down yeah. because like she didn't want it anymore so now she has a daughter again and a granddaughter and a granddaughter and all those dogs <laughs> yeah she has now has i don't know what they would be called but her parents too oh yeah that's right Lou and um amanda this is part of the book but i don't think we mentioned it throughout the book he calls her daisy that's like his little nickname for her and that's why he got her daisies on her phone case which i thought was a sweet touch yes because when he first met her that she showed up into town she had daisies in her hair still from her wedding mm-hmm. this is what amanda naomi mom said she put out of curiosity why do you call her daisy she asked she had flowers in her hair when i met her amanda's smile broadened she left warner and drove straight to you without even knowing it isn't that something I don't know I'm getting teary <laughs> Are you getting teary no, no, the, the way the mother said it, it was so pretty. It, I mean, it is really cute because yeah. you never know. Yeah. You she, never know what's going to happen in your future because she probably thought her whole life was over. Yeah. She's like throwing everything away and being like, I don't have anything and going to see him. Yeah. Which I thought was, that's really cute. There's another quote I really like. So this is one of the quotes I wrote, I highlighted that I really like. So he said, there's a difference between taking care of someone because you love them and taking care of someone because you want them to love you. And that made a lot of sense for me. Oh, I like love it, that. like because like no matter how much you love someone, how much you bend over backwards for them, it doesn't matter because if they don't love you, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that he really taught her that you have to be selfish. You have to do things for yourself. Yeah. Kind of thing, which I love. I love that. But yeah, so Knox ends up doing so much for her. They end up obviously staying together. They're engaged. He gets her parents to move into his cabin. Liza decides that she wants to move into the cottage where she was living at with Waylay and gave the large, beautiful house to her and Waylay and Knox and yeah. for their future, like, bigger family. Oh, and another thing this book had, didn't it have, like, two, like, long, ep- what is it, epilogues? Yes. Oh, so, so there's many. so many long epilogues. There's an epilogue where it's, like, right afterwards – and then there's an epilogue that's five years later. Now, there's another character I do want to talk about. Okay. So, Duncan. Mm. Okay, so Duncan is a character that Tina runs off with. And he comes back into the story. You don't really know it's him. The library. Yeah, he goes to the library, and she immediately gets a weird vibe about it. She's like, I don't know about this. Yeah, and the reason she's there is because that's her second job that she got that uh, Sloan gave her. Yeah. It was a part-time job besides Honky Tonk working at the library so yeah so that creepy guy comes in yeah so she immediately gets the creeps Mm -hmm. but thankfully nothing really serious happens until they get kidnapped yes so she gets to a huge fight with Knox. she goes to walk out she finds tina and tina's like get in the car like he got way late and and so immediately she's like I'm going to go like yeah. mom mode. I, I don't care. This is like my daughter. This is basically her daughter. Yeah. Is everything. So she gets in the car. Unknown to her. Tina is actually kidnapping her. Yeah, she handcuffs her. And it crashes the car too. Mm-hmm. Which by the way, I like the fact that the whole town got together to try to find her. I know. So at first everybody hated her because they thought she was Tina. Yeah. Then everybody still wasn't too sure about her and they wouldn't even call her by her name. They would call her not Tina. Yeah. Which she hated. But she's like awesome. She's such a nice, sweet person. She's like the complete opposite of Tina. And the whole town just ended up loving her. Which was really nice. Mm-hmm. I also really like the fact that it was that they switched clothes in the end and that obviously didn't work. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden Knox come in and defends her. And I love how Nash comes in and he's like almost, he's like bleeding because he's been, oh, we didn't even talk about Nash being shot, by the way. (laughs) So Nash, Knox's brother, he's a sheriff. Yes. He ends up getting shot. shot. Which is, did you expect that to happen? 
No. So I knew. I was like, well, listen, I knew it was going to happen because why know why? I was halfway through reading this book and I said, I'm going to get the second book. Well, I was stupid and I never do this. And I read the description oh. of the second book and it says in the title, in the description, Nash is recovering from being shot. I go, what? Yeah. And he was shot in the torso and in the shoulder. Yeah. And I also love the fact that this is the reason why Knox and Nash got close like, again. Yeah. Because Nash is like, who did it to you? He's yeah. like, nothing will get him going than like revenge. Yeah. And he's like, tell me who it was. Yep. So I really like the fact that even though Nash is recovering, he and Lucian and Knox all run to the rescue. And then of course, here comes Sloan and Lena just running in and be like, what? What's happening? I'm here. And <laughs> Lucian's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> like I literally told you to, to stay. stay. <laughs> That's why I love Lucian yeah. and I love Sloan. So one of the other things I do want to talk about is Duncan. You read the second book, so I don't want I mean, obviously yeah. you know what's going to happen. But I thought it was really nice the fact that Duncan got out so that way he can go on to the other books. Yes. Do you like the fact that this book has like an overall arc of a bad guy? It's just not like, you know, you can read the books individually, but it makes sense to read them together kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. You like that? I, like, I do like that. I don't know. I don't really have anything else to add except I adore Lucian and Sloan. <laughs> that you want to marry Lucian? I mean, listen, if you have, if you're. It doesn't a, work out with Sloan. <laughs> if you're a wealthy sugar daddy, I mean, we both read books, okay? Let's be honest, okay? We both read books. She has a cat of a dog, but you know, whatever. And you know, she's short. She's really short, too. Oh, yeah. The, the, yeah, the whole library and the sh- shortness, I could see why see? you relate more to that book. Yes. Yeah, and right. so if you have daddy issues and you're wealthy, please uh, hit me up. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have anything else to say about this book except I absolutely yeah, love it. It's like I said, it's a long read, but you'll read it fast because you can't put it down. Yeah. It's one of those books that will stay with you after you read it. Now I will say that there's obviously trigger warnings with domestic abuse mm-hmm. and with drug issues and stuff like that. But I do think that Lucy Score has such an amazing way of writing this novel in a way that makes it where it's not too dark yeah and it does talk about a lot of personal issues that i feel like other women can go through yep. so i think that this was such a great book yeah definitely yeah like i said four and a half five stars yeah oh, i loved it they're all great but this one this one was mine this one was yours yeah this one was i mean one. of course you're gonna choose a viking <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> anyways so next week I'm going to have Rosie come back on again, and we're going to be reading Things We Hide from the Light, which is the second novel in the series. This is, of course, like, you know, Rosie won't leave me alone. No, she has I'm to. a stalker. I mean, I wasn't going to say that, but you said it first. And so we're going to be talking about Things We Hide from the Light. And if you guys, I don't want to get too much into it, but all I will say is that it follows Nash, which is Knox's brother, and his storyline involving Lena. Now, if you guys like to support my podcast, please remember to rate us on Spotify as it does help push our podcast out there. Also remember to check out our, us on Audible, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, basically anywhere you can find a podcast. We also have a YouTube channel that we sometimes post on, sometimes. And also remember to check out our Instagram and our TikToks. We do post on those, or at least we try to post on those every week. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will see you guys next week, okay? And hi, I'm Rosie. I like turtles. <laughs> Shut up, Rosie. <laughs> I didn't have anything to plug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you do. I know. So I was like, hey, hi, I like turtles. Hi, <laughs> hi, I like turtles. My favorite and, color is blue. And I'm shorter than Morgan. Okay, bye. <laughs>